Okay, so now that you've taken a little while to watch um, the How Computers Work series, hopefully you have a little bit better of understanding of um, what makes a computer a computer and what some of the components are. So that brings us back to these questions that I'd asked you, and remember, you probably didn't get all of those answered, but let's just go over a little bit of these questions um, for um, especially the things that I know they didn't cover in that video series. So let's start with that first one. What is the main? What are the main functions of RAM, hard drive, CPU, and GPU? So RAM and hard drive are actually both ways to store data on the computer. Um, and so the difference between them, though, is that RAM, it's called random access memory. RAM is the memory that is very, you can think of it very close to the CPU or um, the GPU. It is something that is, um, easily accessed and can access it very, very quickly. So a hard drive is something that is a little bit further away um, you can think about and um, not necessarily in space, but um, I just like to think about it harder to access. How about that? So it's harder to access for the CPU and GPU when they're doing their, their jobs, um, but it generally can store a lot more. So your hard drive space is generally gonna be a lot higher and um, your RAM would generally be lower. So another way to think about another analogy is um, that your RAM is like um, a tool belt for a carpenter, say, and um, your hard drive is like all your tools in your truck. So you can store a little bit on your tool belt and it's the ones you're gonna use the most often, but you can always go to that trusty truck, um, which is your hard drive to, to get more of what you need. So then the CPU is the central processing unit, and that is basically doing a bunch of calculations. And the GPU is the graphic processing unit. So both of these are calculations. They're kind of sort of like RAM and hard drive. They're both doing some sort of calculation for you. The difference is a CPU can do a bunch of calculations in a row very fast. So one calculation, then the other, then the other, then the other, then the other, then the other. And sometimes that's really important if the, um, you know, say the second calculation needs the result of the first calculation and the third calculation needs the result of the second calculation. So you wanna be able to do those calculations like that very fast. Um, however, one of the main things that a computer does is it outputs to, um, that many computers do at least, is they output to a screen. And um, we'll talk about this in more depth later, but a screen has many pixels on it. So many little dots. Um, if you've ever seen, you know, zoomed in really closely to a screen or seen, you've probably seen when Netflix is buffering or something like that, that there's a bunch of different dots on the screen. So when a screen is processing, um, we're putting out graphics on the screen or video especially, um, we are processing all of those little dots at the same time. We're not doing one after another, which is called serial. We're doing them in parallel, all those little dots at the same time. So we need to make sure that um, we have a unit that can do a bunch of parallel calculations or a bunch of calculations at the same time. That's what the GPU is. So the GPU is really, really good at doing those parallel calculations, and the CPU is good at doing those serial ones, which is one after the other, after the other, after the other. Um, so they're different, um, different flavors of the same sort of processing type thing. Um, and then so we, also, we just talked about RAM and internal hard drive memory, and we talked about GPU and CPU. Um, hardware and software is discussed a lot in the uh, um, Khan Academy series, so I won't do that. And same with input and output devices, same thing, and that's discussed a lot. Um, cloud storage was not discussed there, so if you think about um, like OneDrive or Google Drive or um, Box or something like that, that's cloud storage. Um, generally, cloud storage, like if I'm doing something on my computer, Cloud storage is gonna be very slow to access. So you can think of it as like hard drive storage. Um, that's not on your computer. That's on a different computer that you access with the internet. And again, we'll talk more about that later when we talk about high performance computing. Um, system software and application software. Your system software is going to be things that make um, the actual computer or smartphone or whatever work. So those are things for your computer, those are things like drivers for your keyboard and the Windows operating system, maybe that's on your PC or the uh, iOS that's on um, 
you know, an Apple device. So, um, so, so you can think about those are like, and then a special type of system software is an operating system. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and then the main question we're going to try to answer um, with this sort of unit is, um, if you could only update one of the four components in the first line for your computer, which would you upgrade? So we'll be talking about that throughout um, some of these things because a lot of times you're, you purchase a sort of run-of-the-mill computer and then you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna be doing X, Y, Z. What should I spend a little bit more money on, um, you know, on that website to upgrade my computer? So we'll talk about that in the future. So let's just look, look at um, sort of a typical computer and where these things are. So if you um, open up a desktop computer, you're gonna see something like this. Um, you'll have a power supply, you'll have some slots for um, the, the RAM here. Um, you'll have a heat sink that that's usually either gonna be covering or underneath the central processing unit because that is, um, gets really hot when it's doing a lot of those calculations. Um, and then the motherboard you can think of is just holding everything together. So that's all the way around this big square. Um, it just connects everything together. You can think about it like that. Um, expansion slots are in the motherboard just to put other things in there. Um, sometimes you might put um, a, a sound card or a, um, another GPU or something like that. Um, a hard drive usually sits off to the side and sort of like I said, I guess it's a lot of times further away. It's hard to access. And yeah, I mean, you can see it's not right on the motherboard. It's connected with a cable. And so it's further away from the CPU physically as well as hard to access than, than the RAM itself. So that's just an idea of a, of a generic computer. Um, so there's, there's a sort of up close image of, a, of the hard drive there. And an up close image of where the RAM is and the, and the heat sink and the CPU and whatnot. Um, if you want to open up, if you have a desktop computer, open up the desktop computer. Um, the only thing you really wanna be careful about is to um, discharge any static electricity um, before you do that and, and make sure you're safe uh, and it's all unplugged before you open it up. But you can take a look at your desktop computer in there. Um, I don't recommend opening up a laptop um, unless you have experience doing that, but you can definitely look on the outside of your laptop and this is just an example of a, of a laptop. Uh, a lot of times we'll have a security cable. Um, this is an ethernet plug, um, which would be for internet. Um, this is a VGA, VGA port. Um, this is more of the old style monitors use this, so you don't see this too much anymore. You um, usually see the HDMI port more, um, a USB slot, um, an SD card. Um, sometimes you have a smart card reader, not too much anymore. Um, headset, um, some USBs. There's the HDMI, which a lot of times that's what monitors run on now. And then these are the um, Thunderbolt, um, some Thunderbolt ports, um, and just a power indicator and where you plug it in. So uh, that's an idea for what, what it looks like uh, for the laptop. Um, so I would just want you to take a second so and think about what operating systems you know. And go ahead and just pause the video and take a couple seconds and think about that. Okay, so hopefully you thought of a couple operating systems. I sort of mentioned some when I was going through some of those processes. Um, this is a decent image. It has a lot, a lot of different operating systems on there. Um, probably the two biggest ones um, for at least PCs or, or computers, um, desktop or laptop computers would be the Mac OS and the Microsoft Windows. Um, and then for smartphones, the ones you've probably heard of are the iOS and the Android. So, um, so just so you know that Linux is sort of a no-nonsense operating system. I like to think of it as it's uh, sort of bare bones. Um, it's for people who really just want to get in and um, be able to do raw computing um, and not mess around with a lot of the settings and whatnot. So that's what's going on with that. Um, and then, so the only other one that's not on this image is um, Chrome OS. So Chrome OS is a different type of operating system for Chromebooks. Um, again, if you just are going to browse the internet, that's what a Chrome OS is, is nice for. You're just going to be able to access Google Chrome, um, not much else. Um, it can do a little bit more, but nothing uh, major. Um, the main, you know, nice thing about that is it, the battery lasts a long time, it boots up very quickly, and um, it's, it's relatively inexpensive. 
Okay, so I, what I want you to do um, once this video is done is I want you to research a particular operating system and figure out which is best and why. Um, you should be able to do a quick Google search and, and see this now. We might be able, you might just do a job title or a more broad job category, but you might also need to think about what software those, um, those people in this, these occupations are using and where that will run, okay? And then the other thing I want you to think about, we're gonna, we're gonna mess around with this, something called a micro bit um, later on in the course. And I want you to think about which ones of these are hardware um, and which are inputs and which are outputs. And something might be something else like the, the battery sockets, not any of those. Okay, so that's, those are the things I want you to think about um, once this video ends. So thank you for watching and you've reached the end of unit one.